Hello everyone, welcome again. Well, in this video, we are going to discuss about and build.xml. So as we know that there are a lot of configuration you need to do for building your project. So that configuration you need to specify inside build.xml and will parse this build.xml and will do required configuration for you. So this is the plain build.xml which contain the project name, default and base directory as an attribute. So we'll see what is the significance of each of this attribute during the video. So let's say I want to create a directory using ant and build.xml. So inside the ant, whatever the sequence of steps you are going to do, that has to be in the form of target. So if you remember in the Jenkins, it will be in the form of job. Job will contain sequence of step which Jenkins is going to execute. Similarly, here the target will contain sequence of step what ant is going to execute. So inside this build.xml, target is nothing. It's a tag where I need to specify what operation I need to perform. Okay. And every target will have a name. So let's say I will name this target as create. So this target will do means this target will create a directory for me. So if you want to create a directory, so just like in command prompt you, you use mkdir, similarly here you, you need to use mkdir tag and specify the directory name. So let's say I want to create a lib directory. Okay. So this is my target inside which I have specified the mkdir tag which will use to create a directory and this will be the directory name. Now in order to run this build.xml, I have to navigate to the location where my build.xml is there. So this will be the location. And so here it is build.xml. So in order to run the target, you need to supply the command and space name of the target. So target name is create. So here I will type create. So as you can see that it has displayed the name of target and also it has created the directory. So if I go to the location where my build.xml is there, as you can see there, there is a lib directory created. Now here comes the significance of base directory attribute. Here I have specified the single dot that represents current directory. So whatever the directory structure or whatever the operation I'm performing, in that the current directory will be, refer will be referenced as the base directory. So as you can see here, I have created the directory. So due to base directory as a current directory, it has created the folder lib directory inside the same directory. However, if I make it like this lib. So now whatever the operation I'm going to do, it will refer the base directory as lib. So let's say here, I'll create one more directory bin. So now for and the base directory is the lib directory. So this folder will get create inside the lib directory. So let me show you and create. So in order to run this target along with the and command, specify the target name. So I go to my folder inside the lib directory. So as you can see that it has created the bin directory. So this is the significance of base directory attribute, but for our use, I will make it to the current directory. Now let's say there is one more target or let's say I want to print something at the console. So again, I will create a target for this. Let me call it as print one. And in order to print something at the command prompt, you need to use echo tag and specify the string which you want to print. So this is and build. So again, here and followed by the target name. So as you can see that this is and build. Let me create one more target similar to this. Print two. And let's say the default, the value of default attribute is print one. So if I specify print one, it is going to trigger the print one target. 
if I specify print to, it is going to spec uh, it is going to trigger the print to target. Okay. So let me change it something here. Print to. So now if I just speci uh, if I just type the end command, I am not specifying any target name. So if I press enter, so automatically whatever the target name you have specified inside the default attribute, it is going to take that and execute it. So this is the significance of your default attribute. When you don't specify any of the target name along with and command, it will take the target name which you specify in default attribute. Okay. So here it is print one. Let me make it to print two. And if I run it again without specifying any target name, it is going to run the print to target. So so let us suppose I want to create a directory and before creating I want to delete it. So before creating that directory, I will check if that directory is present. If it is present, I will delete it. So target delete. So here, in order to delete a directory or a file, you need to help take the help of delete tag. If you want to delete a file, you specify the name of the file like this. And if you want to delete a directory, you have to specify the name of directory like this. So let us suppose I will delete the lib directory and also if there is bin directory so delete bin and let's say one more directory reports or I will make it to src okay now in the create target I will create all this directory okay so if this directory are present it is going to delete all this directory and recreate them so this will be mkdir and also you can take the help of this verbose command so it is going to print the information at the console so I'll make it to true. Okay. So now I have lib directory. So if I run and delete, so it is going to delete the directory. And as you can see, because of this verbose attribute, it is printing this information at the console that which directory it has deleted. So now as you can see that it has deleted the lib directory. Now if I run it and create, so it is going to create three directories for me. Okay. Now let us suppose you want to create a dependency among this target. For example, I want to execute create target only after delete target. Okay. Means prior to this target, delete target should get executed. So for that, I need to create I need to use the depends attribute and here I need to specify the name of the target so using this attribute I am creating a dependency among these two target so if I run this target alone it will not make any difference but if I run this create target automatically because of this depends attribute it is going to execute this target so let's run it so create so as you can see that I have triggered the create target but before executing the create target it has executed the delete target so using the delete sorry using the depends attribute you can create the dependency among them ok so now if I want to delete a file so for that here I'll specify delete 
and the name of the file so let's say I create a file here test.txt and I want to delete this file so I'll just specify the name of this file and as I told you the reference directory is the base dir so this tag will look this particular file inside the current directory so we run it and create so it has deleted that text file okay so these are the some common target which we have discussed in our next video we are going to discuss some more target means how you can copy file how you can run uh, uh, sorry how you can compile a java file how you can run it so all those stuff which we uh, so all those stuff we are going to discuss in our next video so that's all for this video and thanks for watching